PlayStation Vita, the proper way to game on a handheld. Hey everyone, I'm Laurencio and in this video I'm going to talk about the only Spider-Man game that was made for the Vita. The Amazing Spider-Man. And for a portable experience, the game is amazing. I know that I wasn't so favorable when reviewing the same game on 360. But there, for a 360 game, it was pretty lackluster. While here, considering that you can take such a game with you, it's a pretty amazing experience. What is even cooler is that, aside of the graphical downgrade, The Amazing Spider-Man on the Vita is the same game as on 360. The animations are the same, the bosses are the same, even the collectibles and the side activities are the same. The Amazing Spider-Man is a good game, but be warned that it doesn't abide to the classic formula. People who like challenging games or to do stuff their own way won't like the game. The fighting mechanics are new, now you have an attack button and a dodge button and you can web strike with another button and interact with another. I know it sounds close to the other ones, but you still feel many times that all of the fights almost feel like an interactive cutscene. In fact, somehow all of the game feels like a big interactive cutscene to some extent. The game tells you which button to press and everything is pretty easy and straightforward. Or at least that's what I thought first. But then I found out that if you play on the hardest difficulty, the game doesn't aid you anymore. So it's all good. But boss fights aren't exciting nor challenging. And I don't like the many enclosed areas in the game. Spidey feels greater in the open. But in this game, paradoxically, the indoor areas are better than in outdoor as they look better and more exciting stuff happens there. Also the game has a web rush feature, which is this camera that when you press the left shoulder button it pauses the game and you can target where Spidey will jump. To some it's annoying at first, but once you get used to it, it can be useful, as for example comic book pages are linked to the left shoulder button too, and pausing to target the comic book page is useful. Though many times the web rush feature feels like it puts a halt on the gameplay. It pauses the action for you to target. Or at least that's my opinion, because it seems that I'm the only one with this opinion. You can also upgrade Peter's stats and you can unlock new costumes. And aside of missions, you can also solve crimes in the city like you could in other Spider-Man games. The graphics, even if they have a really low resolution, look better on the Vita in my eyes than on 360. They are so low res that the game starts to look like a mix between cartoon and reality. And I like it. But what I don't like is the frame rate when in free roam. The game lags in free roam. Almost always. I also like the little details like Spidey suit deteriorating more and more over the game. Overall, even if on 360 I said about the same game that it's just good, on the Vita it's amazing. Having such a good game on the go makes it better. You get a free roam Spider-Man game on the go that is also solid and offers a lot of content. You can finish the story in around 8 hours and a half and with all the collectibles and stuff to do in the city, the game offers around 20 hours of gameplay. For a game on the go, this is amazing. Also the combat is satisfying, even if I said that due to the guiding the game gives you, it feels many times like it's an interactive cutscene. The animations make you feel great and the combat is great. And if you play the game on the hardest difficulty, there won't be any guiding, so you're the one playing the game. You don't just press whatever button appears on screen. So overall, the game is amazing, just like the title says.